guys welcome back today I'm going to film a lashes and lips makeup tutorial in my last video I asked you guys if you wanted to see a red lip for the festive season and it was a resounding yes lots of you asked for a red lip with a simple eye so what's more simple than just making it about lashes and keeping it more of a statement lip today I'm going to use a primer the one I'm going to use is by Murad this is the Invisiblur perfecting shield broad spectrum SPF 30 so this is a clear fluid and it gives a velvety finish to the skin so this is really good at reducing the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles and pores especially around the t-section of the face i've definitely put too much on it's definitely one of the smoothest pore refiners i've ever ever felt it's more than just like velvet it's so so soft and this is good for all skin types whether you're oily dry sensitive you can use this product without any irritation. It's non-comedogenic, so it's not going to clog your pores. It's just gonna sit over the top of them so they become less visible. I did have a bit of trouble getting this out. I would lock the lid in place and then store it upside down so the fluid's always over the pump. Otherwise you could be sitting there trying to pump it for ages and then you realize there's an air gap between the fluid and the pump itself. But this is beautiful. This is so, so silky. It's the first time I've used it. Received it this morning and I haven't felt anything like it. That is lovely. The foundation I'm going to use today is the Beyond Perfecting Foundation by Clinique. This is a two-in-one foundation and concealer. So the idea is it gives you super full coverage so you don't need to apply a concealer. I'm still going to use one today. I've been purchasing these myself. I really, really love the consistency and the texture. So it does have a massive doe foot applicator, which probably isn't the most sanitary. Make sure you're always applying it to clean skin. If you can decant it, it will be better for you. Now this foundation, upon research, used to say that it would go on darker and then as it dried down, it would change and become a little bit lighter. So with that in mind, I've tried to choose shades that would match my skin. This one definitely looks better in this light. I had cork before and cork, although was coming up as a match for me based on foundations that I'm already using in terms of a color match, it was still just coming up too dark on initial application. And then once I'd lightened the center of the face, the rest of it looked great. Um, but I decided to go with neutral and it does look a bit better, but it is definitely a hard foundation to choose online. So this foundation is 29 pound. It's not super expensive, but obviously it's still not classed as an affordable foundation. Um, it's not a high street priced foundation. So you definitely want to get the shade right in America, I know that if the shade doesn't match you, you can take the foundation back. I don't know if that's the same in the UK, but this one's actually not a bad match. So they say this foundation is great for dry combination and oily skin types. I am oily and I really, really like this foundation. I actually think I may wear this for the wedding. I've said that a couple of times about different foundations, but this one is really good. I had to do a job recently um, for an eyebrow company and I kept having to take the product off my brows and just touch up the foundation. And it just did not matter how much I kept putting on and on and on. It didn't get thicker. It didn't have kind of marks where it was meeting the foundation that I'd previously been wearing for an hour. It just blended brilliantly. I was so impressed. I've never seen a foundation do that. So I love it. I think it's brilliant. It just seems to wear lovely. It looks incredible on the skin. And although it is full coverage, it's not mask-like, but it's definitely buildable. I do realize I'm a little bit late to the game with this foundation. <laughs> so as you can see, it's a tiny bit darker than the rest of my skin. But again, I'm gonna lighten the center of the face anyway, just for a little bit of extra coverage. And you guys will see, it will look absolutely fine. I'm gonna take the shade Nude in the Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer by Too Faced. By the way, do you like my festive nails? sparkly so the shade I'm using is nude I'm gonna pop that on with my finger and this is going on the center of the face to bring it up a little bit even though I'm not necessarily trying to conceal anything I just want to look a little bit more perfected taking my damp beauty blender I'm gonna press that into the skin so who is ready for Christmas this will go up Sunday which will be the 20th so right on top of Christmas and I've done all my shopping I was actually done pretty early this year was nice. Using what's left on the sponge to press that over the eyes. My nan's just been in the hospital having a hip replacement done so we weren't even sure she was going to be out in time for Christmas but thankfully she's home. 
I've been a bit quiet on social media recently because we've had so much going on. I've kind of neglected social media, but sometimes that's nice, especially at the festive season, to be around your friends and family without having to feel pressured to continue to work. And we all have those times, don't we? This foundation is so, so incredible. It just looks like skin, but perfected. I'm gonna zoom in and show you. Bear in mind, I've not set my skin yet, so it's gonna be really shiny. There might be some creasy areas under my eyes, but just so you can see, it looks beautiful. See how perfected it makes your skin look? I mean, foundation is still foundation. You're always gonna see makeup, but this is the most flawless it looks without detecting makeup. And bear in mind, I have got the full coverage concealer here, but all of this is just the foundation. You can see the pores look a lot better because we've got that primer on, but also I find once you use a sponge over your pores, it always looks a little bit better. Glowy, I mean, we will set that in place anyway. You can see it's not heavy on the skin. It just looks so pretty. To set my under eyes, I'm gonna take the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Powder in the shade Fair One. As we're not applying any eyeshadow, which you can totally do if you want to, I wanna keep it really simple today. So I'm gonna go straight in and set my skin. So I've pressed my sponge into the powder. I'm using that to press over the top. You can use a brush if you prefer. But before you set it, just make sure any tiny little creases have totally disappeared you've worked them into the skin. So up and press. When you use powder, your skin is always gonna look a little bit more crepey. You don't have to set it. I always say, sometimes it's better not to set it, especially if it gets really crepey, because once you apply powder and the moisture from your foundation or your concealer starts to come out, they create a bit more of a cakey finish and that's really hard to blend back into the skin. You can't just put more powder over the top. Otherwise you're applying layer upon layer, which is just giving you more texture. Sometimes it's better to leave your concealer right underneath the eye where it's most crepey with no powder. And then when it moves, you can use your finger just to kind of put it back into place. Or you can apply a little bit more concealer over the top and it's not going to mix with the powder and become cakey. Now this does tend to work better with products that have a little bit more emolliency to them rather than one that kind of dries down and sets in place. It really is personal preference. Have a play around, see what works best for you. So I'm still going in with Fair, and I'm just gonna press that onto the center of my face to take down any shine. You can see that's so mattifying instantly. I don't wanna take any shine away from the side of my face, it's just the center. I'm gonna move on to eyebrows. As you know, I'm a creature of habit. My two favorite brow products are the MAC Shape and Shade Brow Tint, and then we have the Urban Decay Brow Blade. I do have tutorials for both of these and I'm gonna link them on screen for you now. Today I've opted for the Brow Blade. This shade is a little bit darker than the MAC one and I find with a statement lip and not much going on with the eyes, the brows do need to be more of a focal point. So that's why I've opted for this particular shade. I'm using Cool Cookie, which really does match my natural brow color, which is a bit more of an ashy brown. And remember, if you would like a talk through on how I do my brows, I have linked it on screen at the top right corner for you. Before I apply some eyelashes, I'm gonna take this coffee pencil by MAC and smudge that along the root of my eyelashes. Sometimes if you're not applying eyeshadow, it can look a bit stark when it goes from skin to full on lashes. So sometimes it's nice to smudge a color along here. You can use an eyeshadow, but I do find the pencils tend to be a little bit more long wearing. If you don't have coffee, you can also use the shade Costa Riche by MAC, or you can use any brown shade that you have by any brand. Urban Decay do some really good long wearing eyeliners. Any brown shade will do, as long as it's soft enough for you to smudge out either with your finger or a brush. For lashes, I'm taking these Lash Base Natural Collection lashes. All of these are absolutely beautiful, but I'm gonna take the set LB01. And the glue I'm gonna use is Duo Glue. I prefer this glue, it doesn't pull out your eyelashes, but it does stay in place all day and it does dry down to a clear finish. So allow the glue to become tacky before you apply it to your lids. I am doing this before applying any mascara. And the reason for this is because I really do want the lashes to be super fluffy instead of a spidery finish that mascara can often give. But I'm putting a small amount on my natural lashes to darken them. Then I'm going back in with my coffee pencil and I'm running that very softly along the root of my lower eyelashes. And this really just softly defines them without having the appearance of wearing actual eyeliner. And then I'm finishing off with a light coat of mascara on my bottom eyelashes. And the mascara that I'm using is my favorite. It's the Louboutin Amplifying Mascara. 
So our eyes are really, really simple. These give you a beautiful, full, natural finish. Lash Base who make these lashes also supply semi-permanent eyelashes, the little individual ones that you go to a lash tech to have applied to you. So that's why they've done these beautiful strips so that you can have these at home when you can't visit your lash tech. So I haven't used this one in a while, but it is well loved. This is the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. This is the Milk Chocolate, and it also comes in dark chocolate for deeper tones. And the brush I'm gonna use is the Blue Min Blush Brush by Bare Minerals. This is from the Holiday Collection. So we're gonna put that into the hollows of the cheeks and pull it downwards. Using these brushes are great because they're angled, they hug the area they're supposed to and they just apply in real easy fashion. Get yourself one of these types of brushes if you aren't very good at applying a contour in the area that you're supposed to or you struggle to blend it out, try one of these. Always brush it upwards as well, don't bring it downwards because otherwise you're kind of defeating that sculpting that you're trying to create. Also going to take that around the hairline. If you've got a very small forehead you don't have to do this. I like to add a bit of warmth around here because it really does kind of hug the face which makes that area look like it sinks back slightly so all the central panels of the face look like they come forward a bit more. It makes the face look a little bit more narrow, a little bit smaller in general. When you wear a red lip, I would say put your lip on first before you do your blush because you could put your blush on and it's too strong so when you put your red lip on it's like a clash of colours. I have so many reds that I often put to the side and think, oh, I'm gonna use that for a red lip day. Most people are gonna want something more affordable, so I'm gonna use one by Pixie. This is real red. If you're somebody who suffers with feathering when you wear a red lip, then definitely try a pencil first. Take it over the entire lip, and then wear a color over the top, but don't take it right up to the line. Use a brush to blend that in. It's less likely to sort of like migrate. You can also use a lip primer. There are lots of brands that do lip primers. They kind of work the same way a normal primer would. You can also use Milk of Magnesia. I know it sounds really crazy, but it really does help keep everything kind of like matte and staying in place. So you could try a little bit of that first. So this is what I'm using. It's by Pixie. It's called Real Red. It has a beautiful little doe foot applicator with a point to it, which makes it really easy to get into the corners of your lips and around your cupid's bow. I'm going to put the majority of it on straight from the applicator, which is so, so soft. I don't know if this is a matte finish. I've never used it before. It doesn't say. This applicator is so good. Look how defined that line is with just the applicator. That is crisp. <laughs> right, so that is a matte finish and the payoff is incredible. Take my hair down. Lovely, it's like wearing velvet. If you don't like blush, leave it as is. For blush I'm going to take the tiniest amount of the Nudies Bloom by Nude Sticks in the shade Poppy Girl because this does have a bit more of a reddish undertone to it compared to the others. I'm going to apply a very tiny amount. Now remember this is more of a dewy finish so if you want to stick with matte like we've got on the lips um, then just apply a matte blush. This one is dewy. I'm going to pop it on the apples of the cheeks but really subtly. So I've put all the rest of it on the back of my hand. You want it to be a statement lip, so everything else really does need to be a bit more subtle. So that completes today's festive makeup look. Super, super simple. Really, really effective. I think it's gorgeous. The face is really flawless. Talking about it like it's not mine. The lashes and everything are there but they're not overstated. I think this would be beautiful for Christmas Day. Wearing a matte lip means you've got a little bit more longevity so you can drink, you can eat. I've been drinking out of my water bottle for the last 10 minutes and there's not a single little bit of red on there which is great. So you can drink on Christmas Day with this kind of red lip and it's not going to wear off. The actual makeup itself has been set with powder but it doesn't look cakey, it doesn't look powdery. We've got a bit of a glowy dew to the cheeks because of the Nudies Bloom which again you would think would be a product that would move because it's dewy but it doesn't. It has the most incredible staying power. So the whole look itself is a wearable, not over the top, daytime glam that will last you all day and if you really want some added security you can apply the Huda Beauty 
rest emboss face over the top because that is the ultimate setting spray. That's the spray I've decided I will be wearing on my wedding day because it really does not move. It's like lacquer for your face. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Please let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Please all have a wonderful and safe Christmas. I hope you have the best time possible considering we are in a pandemic. I hope you get to spend time with your loved ones. And thank you so much for all the support this year. I don't know if I'm going to do a New Year's Eve look. The last couple of years I've had that time off to spend with my family and um, I didn't bother to record. So if I don't, I hope you forgive me. But if I do, I will see you next week. If not, I will see you in January. I love you all bundles. I know I don't actually know you all, but I speak to so many of you. I see so many familiar faces. Um, oh, I'm going to get upset thinking about it. Thank you all for supporting me. <laughs>